Hey everyone, my name is Carly Bly with Toyota Motor North America. Welcome to Understanding Four Wheel Drive, a three part video series about Toyota's four wheel drive systems. This is part one of three. Let's start by going over some drivetrain basics. To really understand four wheel drive, we need to understand the limitations of two wheel drive. With two wheel drive, the power flows from the engine to the transmission and then out through the drive shaft to the differential gear, which is responsible for splitting the power out to the left and right wheels. This differential is the first step in understanding traction and drivetrain power flow. By controlling the distribution of power, it can also determine whether the wheels lock together or rotate independently. Typically, power flow is split evenly between the left and right sides with no difference in individual wheel speeds so long as the vehicle is traveling in a straight line. But we need the wheels to be able to spin at different speeds because as the vehicle goes around a curve, the wheels travel along slightly different paths, meaning the outer wheel is rotating slightly faster because it's having to cover a wider arc. Because of this speed difference, most vehicles use something called an open differential, which allows for wheels to spin independently as needed. But with an open differential, the power flow is always going to follow the path of least resistance. So if one wheel starts to spin, say on a patch of ice or mud, the power flow will simply keep spinning that wheel, sending 100% power to it instead of the one with traction. For many situations, this can be mitigated with modern traction control systems, which momentarily apply the brake on the spinning wheel, sending power back across the axle. Another way to get around this is by using a limited slip or locking differential instead, which as you'd guess, can limit the amount of slip between the two wheels, or even just lock them together entirely. But even if we maximize traction across one axle, it can be necessary to send power to another part of the vehicle entirely. And that's where four wheel drive comes in. So with these drivetrain basics in mind, follow along in the next section as we dive into part-time four wheel drive. 